tell the more than that. I say, say log then. <clears throat> log then. Peace and blessings. What's up, cousin? How you doing? <clears throat> God bless you. God bless you. Um, I guess as people get on, they could just uh, see the replay. Play. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, congratulations by the grace of God you made it into another year um, I'm happy I'm excited about what God is about to do in your life I'm really excited like <clears throat> last year was a time of you know struggling and ups and downs and trials and tribulations for so many but I believe Great things are in store for you in 2018. Those that have been waiting on the Lord, those that have put their faith and confidence in God, those that have been expecting for God to move on their behalf. I really believe in this year, you're really going to walk into many, many, many promises of God. God is faithful to his word. His promises are yes and amen. Um, it's, it's so etched in stone that God already seen it completed before he even announced it to you. So, praise God. You guys see my title, um, Garden Graces, The Presence of Eden. And uh, I'm not going to be before you too long. I just wanted to share with you a vision that the Lord gave me this morning. And I'm so grateful that he gave it to me on January 1st to set the tone of my new year. And I pray that it'll do the same thing for you. Um, I don't really have time to really break down the revelation of the Garden of Eden as God had given it to me. But I, I would like to um, just share with you this. Just share with you um, this vision the Lord gave me this morning. All right. So. <laughs> Hey, cousin, what's up? I, I see you on. you like, what is he going to talk about? I've been following your posts, and the information you've been sharing is very, very interesting. It's funny how God has been really bringing more revelation and insight about the Garden of Eden as of lately, um, especially to me. So yesterday, um, last night, me and my wife and a couple of them, um, my, my partners in the ministry, we went to a concert with David and Nicole Binion, and it was awesome. It, it was it was awesome. Um, the worship was beautiful. The declarations, the, the the words of their song was awesome, and more importantly, the presence of God. It was a it was a strong anointing there. It was a strong um, um, sense of God's presence, and it was wonderful. I really enjoyed the worship. But David Binion. He, he had a dream from the Lord and he was sharing his dream. And his dream was, in essence, about him tapping into a realm that the Holy Spirit told him is the realm of the Garden of Eden. Is the realm of the Garden of Eden. It was such a blessing because, you know, he felt led of the Lord to release it, you know, to everyone there, everyone present. So he made a declaration, a prayer, a declaration that everyone that was open and willing to receive that, that God would extend to them a dimension of his presence that um, would be synonymous to what the Holy Spirit told him is a Garden of Eden dimension. And you know me, I receive, I mean, whatever God has for me, I'm open to receive it, you know, I'm just open-minded when it comes to God. Now, I share that because I woke up this morning 
and the Lord gave me this interesting vision, an interesting vision, like, and I wasn't really seeking for a vision. I wasn't praying about it. I just woke up. And when I woke up, the first thing that the Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart, before I could even get into prayer, open the word of God, wait upon him, is as if God was anxious for me to wake up because he really wanted to show me something like he really wanted to show me. It was like before I could even seek him, he was already showing me. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning um, when I woke up, he says, you have come to others' wells, but this is the time for you to become a well. He said, you've come to others' wells, but this is the time for you to become a well. So, you know, I just, I'm just waking up. So I'm like, mm, amen, God, praise God. Like, you know, I'm, we go to this conference and we listen to this teaching and we, you know, we, we, we follow after this man of God and this woman of God. And I thank God for every woman and man of God that he's ever given. They're all a blessing. And I love to receive from men and women of God. But the Lord was saying that it's a time for me to not just seek to receive from others well, but that I myself will become a well that others will draw from. And I was like, amen, praise God. Now, as I that revelation kind of opened my spirit for what God really wanted to show me. Like, So I started to get these flashes in front of my face, you know. I started to get these flashes before my face of different imageries like you know it, it was it's, it's within my mind you know some visions come within the mind Dave, Daniel said that that he had a vision in his mind that troubled him so it was like God was opening my, my mind to to what he wanted to show me but it was like 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 it was like I saw through the glass dimly I couldn't really fully make out what was being shown me but you know, it was evident that God wanted me to receive something. Now, <clears throat> in my own personal walk, you know, when, when that happens, I know that it's like an open door. It's like God has something for me. You know, he'll give me a little bit, a little crumb. And it's it, the reason he gives me that is to draw me closer to receive more. You know, uh, Proverbs 25, 1 and 2 said, It's the glory of God to conceal things. But it's the nature of kings to seek it out. So sometimes God, he kind of sets something before you and to, to draw you on a journey to seek more, like to investigate, to inquire more. You know, sometimes we get in this place where we, with God is all these absolutes, like, oh, it's this way, it has to be this way. But the truth of the matter is there's a, there's a, there a realm of mystery to God that we have to seek and journey. Uh, uh, we're in a journey of discovering more and more, like, as soon as you think that you know one thing, God opens up more revelation to you. So this is like, this is how this moment was. I was so tired. I was like, God, you know, I just want to go to sleep. It's like five in the morning. But it was evident that God wanted to show me something. So I said, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice to sleep and I'm going to get in God's presence. And I did. And it was, I thank God that I did because it was amazing the things that he showed me. All right. So I'm, I wrote some of this down. So I'm going to bounce back and forth. As I pondered this, I saw flashes and pictures in my mind of a forest, or so it looked like. So it was like these pictures, it was like I was seeing through my own eyes, and I was walking through this forest of trees. It was dark, you know, it was, it was dark outside, and um, I was moving through these trees, and it seemed to be like what, what we, would, we would say is foggy. So you can kind of see the fog, like the mist of the fog, like in between the trees and everything. So I'm, I, I don't know where I'm going. It's like I'm lost, but I'm going through these trees. All right. So as I'm going through these trees, the Holy Spirit brings this, uh, these words to my heart. Um, glory trees, trees of glory and excellence. So, you know, I'm just, I'm like, amen. You know, I'm just receiving it. I have no idea what, where the Holy Spirit is leading me, what God wants to show me, but I'm just t receiving the information step by step as it comes to me. So he said, glory trees, 
trees of glory and excellence. All right. So as I just begin, I, I continue to meditate upon the vision. And as I begin to meditate on it more and more, it became clear and clear. Like, <clears throat> So in the vision, the Lord was showing me. Um, the, as in the in the vision, the Lord was showing me I was beholding some of the trees. I, w I started to look up at the trees and examine what they look like. Okay, so s these trees was like, they weren't like anything that I ever saw before. One tree had fruit that was purple, but it wasn't physical. It looked like liquid smoke. So I looked up and I was observing, you know, the uniqueness of these trees. And this tree was massive and it, it looked like fruit dangling from the tree. Just like if you see an apple tree or orange tree or whatever. It had the fruit. It had like what looked like to be fruit dangling from the tree. But it was it was purple color. But it was like, it, <laughs> I'm just explaining to you what I saw. You know, it was like... Um blurry it would look it looked blurred but it would look smoky it looked like it was moving like it just it just that's just how it looked all right and then as i looked at other trees they all looked different another tree had what looked like it looked like fruit of melted candy it looked like fruit of melted candy and another tree it had where the fruit was you know it was like fire Okay, so this tree had fruit, but the fruit was actually fire, all right? So as I'm just thinking about these things, the Holy Spirit is giving me words of knowledge for each tree. So the, the purple tree that had the liquid smoke fruit, he said that that was a glory tree. That was like a fruit of glory. And then the, obviously the one that was a tree of fire represent the fire of God. But the, the tree that had like this, it looked like melted red candy from it. What came to my spirit, what came to my heart was the blood of Jesus. That's what came to mind. So I'm walking through these things. So basically, trees often refer to kings. Amen. Thank you for that. <laughs> now... So this is what I saw. Now I'm going to break down a little bit more and then I'm going to give you what I interpret for what God was trying to show me. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad you said that Kings thing. So as I kept journeying through these trees, this looking at them and going through the trees like I was, like I was lost kind of, I came into this big open space, all right? And in this open space, it was, it was like a circular field. And it, in the middle of this circular field, it was a well, all right? It was a well, and the well wasn't real tall. It probably was only like one or maybe one and a half, two feet tall from the ground. It was short, you know? Um, it, it would look like something that wasn't safe if you had your kids next to because it, it wasn't tall at all. The wall of the well wasn't tall at all. But the well was so beautiful. It was like a sky blue color, but it glowed. It, it was it, it was like light. It glowed. It was almost like a neon, baby blue color. And out of this well, it can't. It looked like fog was coming out of this well. Like, it looked like I don't know if you've seen people back in the days, a witch or something, when they're brewing in a pot, and it's like you see the smoke coming out of the pot, and it just settled on the ground. It that's exactly what it looked like. It was like this mist or this fog that came out of the well and it settled on the ground. It made like a layer on the floor of the entire forest or group of trees that I was in. It was just like a mist or a fog on the ground, right? So I'm just sitting examining this vision and just open to receive whatever Holy Spirit is using the vision to interpret to me. I See, like I understand the purpose that God give us a vision the purpose that God give us a vision to bring us into a greater um, spiritual reality, uh, to bring us into a greater reality of the spirit realm or the reality that is around us. Jesus said, if you continue in my words, then you will know the truth. 
But that word truth isn't necessarily information. It's, a, it's the word reality. So Jesus said, if you continue and you listen to what I'm saying, you're going to know the real reality of what's going on around you. The spirit reality that many can't see with the natural eye. So that's why God give visions. God give visions to connect us to the spiritual reality of what's going on around you. So I, I know that I, I would just open and receive what God was trying to show me that he was giving me access to. Praise God. Shh, go in the room. Shh, go. Go in the room for a second. I'm doing the video. So it was just a blessing. So um, I saw the well and it was this mist and this like smoke coming out of it. Right. And then it was these, you know, like when a tree has roots. All right. I could see the roots of the trees somewhere out of the ground and somewhere in the ground. And it was like these roots that came from the well and they were coming out of the, they were flowing like in the ground and out of the ground, some on top of the ground, some under the ground. And the roots were sky blue neon color, like they shine bright, like a glory. The, the roots were the same color as the well, like this sky blue neon color. It was so beautiful. Like it was like, it was like a scene out of Avatar or something like, remember Avatar movie at the nighttime, how everything glowed. That's how the well looked. All right. So, so as I thought about this, what the Lord brought into my remembrance, how David and Nicole Binion had prayed and released that we would tap into a garden of Eden dimension. So it was like, oh, it just clicked for me that what I was experiencing, the vision that I was experiencing was a manifestation of their prayers. And God blessed David and Nicole Binion for their service and their ministry. And I thank you for using them to open this up to me. Praise God. So I was like, oh, so then once I once once the Holy Spirit made my mind focus on a Garden of Eden, then it made sense everything that I was seeing like. So when I thought about the mist that came out of, obviously the well represents a well of living water. And that's exactly what the Holy Spirit told me that the mist that was coming out of the well represented. He said that that mist is living water. And I'm like, wow, that's powerful because in the Bible, the Bible says that in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't water that actually watered the plants, but it was a mist that came upon the earth that actually watered the plants. I was like, wow, that's a blessing. So I, I understood that the vine was carrying spiritual life to the trees. Psalms chapter one says that, that, that if we meditate on the Lord that, and, and meditate on his laws and keep our minds stayed on it, that we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Like, so this is what God was giving me a picture of. And it was a blessing, like, you know? So the Holy Spirit was just ministering to me that in this year is many that have been waiting on the Lord, many that have been seeking the Lord, expecting the Lord to do great things. And, and you know, they haven't, we haven't seen what we expected in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. But the Lord was ministering to me that this will be a year of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that many of us will enter into a dimension where we will see God do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. I believe that this is a year that God is going to abs absolutely blow our minds. Things that we never even heard. Things that we never even imagined. I believe that God is going to overdo it like we believe God for glory, for miracles, for transformations, for salvations. And I believe this is the year God is going to show us that what we think is impossible is, is easily possible. The, the things that he's going to do, we're going to come into that awareness that, yo, any, anything is possible with God. Anything is possible with God. You know? So he was showing me that this year... Those that have been waiting on the Lord, those that had their faith and their expectation, things haven't always worked the way you thought they should, even the way that you believe God said they should. But this year is going to be a year of productivity and fruitfulness. Like, 
of productivity and fruitfulness. Okay, this what the this what the Lord gave me. This will be a time where trees that have been planted by the river of the water of God's spirit will begin to spring forth as trees of glory and excellence. Trees bearing forth the fruit of the blood of Jesus and the fruit of the holy fires of God. The spirit also spoke. I didn't see this, but the spirit also spoke to me that there were money trees in this place. That there were money trees in this place. How many understand that being in Christ is a place? You know, God use God uses, like, uh, he speaks in tongues. He said, I, w I would speak to these people in a tongue. So God uses, like, all these ideas and pictures to communicate one common message. That he want us in a particular place where we can receive all that he has for us. Whether he uses the language like the Garden of Eden. Or he uses the language like the Promised Land. Or Israel is a physical manifestation of a, pro a place that God's favor and grace rest upon. You know, we're in Christ. In Christ is a place. The Bible says examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. So being in Christ is a place where the promises of God are yes and amen. Okay? So it, a lot of these messages that God has given through the generation is to communicate to us that he wants us in a particular place where we can experience the fullness of what he wants to offer because he loves us. So, you know, I talked about the mist being the uh, living water, okay? So this was really, so, peace and blessings. So this was really a blessing to me because when I received this vision, the way I received it, I, I believe that God was extending an open door for me. It was like an open door. It was like God was excited to extend to me an open door. My cousin, he's leaving now, Jeff S. Morton. If you can't follow his pledge because he talks a lot about these things. He said that trees represent kings. <laughs> and that's also one of the revelations that God gave me concerning 2018. I did a study on the on the number 18 and its significance. And one of the significance to the number 18 was judges. If you read in the book of Judges, there were 18 judges. And that Israel twice in the book of Judges were in bondage for 18 years. I'm going to talk about that later because God is going to raise up kings and judges. I, in this in this year with great judgment and great deliverance and great discernment and great wisdom and counsel that comes from God to lead his people. But that's another whole story. So I received this as an open door, as an invitation. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. I'm I'm kind of private about some of the things that God showed me because some people be haters, some people non-believers, some people are skeptics. And that's okay. You're free to be whatever you choose. But I wanted to share it with you because I'm praying that, and I believe that the same grace um, from this vision that came upon me, I'm believing that it would be extended to you. That as God extended an open door, an invitation to draw closer to him. An invitation to come up higher. Or an invitation to even go lower. But an invitation into a space in the spirit realm that I've never been. A place in the glory that I've never experienced where this, this dimension of fruitfulness begins to materialize in your everyday life. Now, it probably sound deep, and I pray it don't feel deep, but it's really, in its simplest term, just God saying that he wants us to draw closer to him because there's so many things that 
he has for us in this season. It's so many things that he wants to manifest in our lives in this season. It's so many things that he want to bless us with, not because you deserved it, not because you've been faithful, not even because you've been obedient, but because it's the Father's good pleasure to bless his children. Because it's his good pleasure to do so. He gave me this vision and I wasn't even praying and reading or nothing. I just woke up and he just gave it to me. I believe in this year that, that God is going to release gifts and uh, uh, um, graces and miracles that you've been waiting on. Like financial miracles. Like I believe we're going to see supernatural miracles in our families. Like restoration in our families. Mark 8, 24. Amen. I, I, just, I just believe that this year we're going to see the Father go beyond anything that he's going to blow our minds. I just believe that with all my heart. like, And I just encourage you like in the new year, in a, in a new season, you know, to seek God, to spend time, to open your heart to receive Whatever God has for you, to set aside time for God each and every day, like to turn the TV off, to get off social media, to stop being distracted by who's saying what and who's doing what and open yourself to receive from the father. This is a year for many of you where you will walk into the kingdom inheritance that God predestinated for you to have spiritually and naturally like. Some of you are going to get married, like. Some of you are going to walk into your purpose and destiny, like. Some of you are going to be blessed financially in ways you never even imagined, like. Some of you are going to enter into ownership, like. Favorable ownership. Favorable deals, like. Some of you are going to begin to see miracles and healings and deliverance begin to manifest at ease, you're not going to have to struggle and, 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 and strive to see something. Man, you're not going to have to press hard. But it's almost going to be like God wants to do it more than you even want to see him do it. Like. But all these things are an extension of this secret place called the Garden of Eden. I'm going to check out this Mark chapter 8, 24, and I'm going to close it down. You know, it's in the Garden of Eden that the promises of God become yes and amen. It's in the Garden of Eden where we walk as kings and priests. It's in the Garden of Eden, this dimension that we're above and not beneath, the head and not the tail, the borrower and not the lender. It's in this dimension where the favor of God precedes us and the yoke becomes easy. Will you be like that tree planted by the rivers of living water? Like, will you be that believer that walks in the spirit? I believe in this year you're going to see voices come to the forefront that have been on the backside of the mountain, as it were, like David was. You're going to see people come out of obscurity with great power and great glory that God marked their lives with. You're going to see... A, 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 a totally different dimension of the fire of God. Not a forceful fire, a, a gentle, holy fire. A fire marked by the holiness of God. You're going to see it like Mark chapter 8, 24. I'm sorry, I got it. I got it. Thanks, baby. Yeah. It's Mark chapter 8, 24. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Oh, praise God. I'm going I'm to have to share this right now. So it was a blind man that Jesus healed. Jesus laid his eyes upon him and asked, you know, what do you see? And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. 
After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent them away into his house, saying, Neither go into town, nor tell it to any, any in the town. Now, I, I thank you that for that you shared that, because, you know, when David and Nicole Binion were sharing their dream, David said that in his dream, when he came out of this realm, he said that he came out with something like, and he said that he saw this woman that was broken, and he, he what he came out with, he gave it to her, and she was healed. You know, he said that in this dimension is misplaced miracles. I love that he said that. He said in this dimension of the Garden of Eden is misplaced miracles. Basically miracles that people have been waiting for. like that, that will become available in this dimension. But I like this revelation about Mark chapter 8, 24. Jesus healed this man's eyes and then the man said that he saw men like trees so Jesus prayed for him again and then the Bible says that it, his sight was restored right and he saw every man clearly and I used to teach it that you know that he, he was seeing blurry and things was blurry and Jesus had to touch his eye again and that sometimes you gotta pray a second time to see the miracle come into a clarity to see the healing complete itself. And I believe that. But the Lord gave me a whole different perspective on it. And I think it's similar to what my cousin is sharing. About seeing men like trees. When Jesus laid hands upon him. And he opened his eyes to see men like trees. It was nothing wrong with that way of seeing. It actually was a prophetic dimension. Because that's how Jesus saw people. When they asked Jesus about the false prophets earlier. They said, how will we know a false prophet? He said, you will know them like a tree. Just like you know a tree by the fruit that it bears, so you will know these prophets. So often Jesus himself compared men to trees because that's how he saw men, like trees. So when he anointed this man and opened his eyes, he opened his eyes to a prophetic dimension to see people the way he sees them. But how many know when God opened your eyes to see something, sometimes it's hard to receive and then God has to touch your eyes again to adjust your sight so I believe that that's also something that God is going to do God has already laid hands upon people that were blind to spiritual things and opened their eyes prophetically but I believe that God is also going to touch people's eyes so that they will see things more clearly Father in the name of Jesus the same grace and open door that you extended to me through this vision that you gave me this morning by the Holy Spirit. I freely receive it, Lord, and I freely give it. I extend it unto others, Lord God. That an open door will be created unto them, Lord God, in their prayer time. That an open door will be created unto them in their time of study, Lord God. That an open door will be created un for them, Lord God, in their time of meditation and worship, Lord God. And that you would draw them into a dimension that you call by your spirit, the garden in Eden, Lord God. Where we will be anointed to be kings and priests, Lord God. Where we, where we will become glory trees, trees that bear forth the fruit of glory and excellence that comes from your spirit. Trees that bear forth the fruit of of what Jesus shed his blood for us to receive. Trees that bear forth the fruit of holy fire and passion that comes from you, Lord Jesus. Trees that bear forth natural prosperity and productivity, Lord God. According to our kingdom inheritance that Jesus died for us to receive. In Jesus' name, Lord God. I pray that you will release a grace that it will be easy, Lord God. To enter into your presence, God, with thanksgiving. That it will become easy, Lord God, to walk in the spirit, Lord God. That you would increase our sensitivity to your presence and your glory that is all around us, God. That you would soften our heart, Lord. And that you would bless us with a humble and sensitive heart in this very hour. Father, and let these supernatural experiences, Lord God. Set the tone for 2018. 
Let us enter into an Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 dimension, Lord. That eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man. Lord, that you said that you would do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think in Jesus' name. Peace and blessings, family. Love you guys.